welcome. My name is Beth Green. And this is the Granny Rock Show. Because Beth Green, that's me, is also known as Granny Rocks. And this guy over here is, is James Maynard, otherwise known as the Songbird. And I'm here to handle the chat and anything else that comes up. And so please chat with us, and uh, Beth can chat back with you. If you are live, if you're here live, I mean, of course you're live. But if you are here live while we are here live, then I can actually talk to you. Otherwise, write to me anyway, and I will respond afterwards. And we have a comment already. Todd says, hi there. Hi, Hello, Todd. Todd. Thank you. It's so nice to have a response already, so we know we are on the air. So, so tonight, I'm going to talk about why I did not feel like a freak today and why that should matter to anybody, but in fact, it should matter to everyone. What? And why is that? I'm going to tell you. And But first, we have another comment. Ah, Catalina says hi and said several hearts of love. Thank you, Catalina. So, first of all, hi there, Catalina. What do I mean by freak? I hate that word. You know, it's used in the circus and to oh, yeah. really put people down, although there are also things like freak storms. That means that it's something that is kind of out of the ordinary, although today freak weather is the norm, it seems like. But it's something out of the ordinary. So we look at it as like, what? What's that? Okay. <laughs> So first, I'm going to very briefly talk about why you should care about this topic, and then I'm going to tell you more about it. Samal says, I love your piano playing, Mom. Thank <laughs> you, Samal. Appreciate it. Of course, this is not our piano playing show that's coming tomorrow night, but I do play the piano on Granny Rocks. Oh, and Amy says, hi, you two, and sends a heart of love and a smile. Hi there, hi there. So, my fellow freaks. <laughs> so the reason that it is really important to talk about why I didn't feel like a freak today is that a lot of people feel like that about themselves, although they might not say it directly like I do. You know, Granny, I'll just say it like it is how people really feel about themselves and I and that's really painful and I want to talk about that but also why that's important for everybody is the more people feel like freaks the less investment they feel in the world as it is and the more likely they are to go out and shoot somebody mm. or do some other kind of like crazy political, what I think is crazy, political activities. Because people who feel alienated and alone try to gravitate towards one an another to support one another with their pain. Yeah. So I've already given you the answer. <coughs> to Bless the, you. <coughs> to the question why you should care. But However, I do have a lot more to say. So try to stick around for the rest of the show. <laughs> okay. So why did I feel like a freak? Or why have I tended to feel like a freak? And how did that change today? Because I think it's very important to take a look at this example. Because what happened to me could happen to other people. So they won't feel that way anymore. Well, when I was growing up, I didn't. I never made it uh, a secret to any of you. I felt 
totally different from everybody else. I loved classical music. And I was an intellectual. <laughs> I mean, they used to call me the walking, talking, pocket-sized dictionary. So, I don't know why, but I was a little different. I still am in a lot of ways. Oh, and Tracy says hello and sends love. Thank you. Hello Same to, to you, you too. Tracy. So, in those ways, I was a kind of a freak. But there was another more significant way. I just didn't have the body that other children had. So, and what that meant was I couldn't do what other children could do. So, they're playing in the playground or they're in gym and they're going... <laughs> And I'm um, nothing, nothing. I couldn't do anything that the other children were doing. Nothing. And let me tell you something. I felt like a freak because it wasn't a positive thing. Okay, so you could say, well, okay, I was a very intelligent child, or I was very cultured, or I was with a, okay, so I could somehow try to make myself think that that was a good thing. But how do you make it a good thing that you can't do anything physical? Yeah. That you can't jump rope like the other kids, or you can't, I mean, and so I would go into gym, and they would just like do, they would say, okay, now class, do this, do this, do this. And I just stood there because I couldn't do anything. Push up, sit up, uh, jumping pull jacks, pull ups, whatever ups or downs it was. So anyway, I was also ill a lot as a child. And then I became really severely ill when I was 15. So then I really couldn't do anything. And so I've spent the rest of my life being I kind of like, I can't go to the movies, I can't go out, I can't go to a restaurant, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, and I can't do dishes, and I, oh, <laughs> and I can't cook, and I can't go, okay. So, so was that a good thing? I don't think so. But I didn't really give it a lot of thought until today. And this has a happy ending, see? And, but this is a very instructive and important happy ending. <coughs> you know, when I was 15, I stopped being able to play the piano, too. So I wasn't a freak in that sense. But even among pianists, see, I was no good because I couldn't play what the other children could play because I was too weak. I was too sick. And so you were short with the small hands. I was short. I was always the shortest. I was always the youngest. I had small hands, and I was just, you know, no good. Well, guys, so at 15, I had to stop playing the piano altogether. Now, in my mid-70s, I got the message from God, you can't play what they're doing improvise play what you can don't play classical music anymore don't read music just play what your body will allow you only improvise empty my brain so i started doing that and all of a sudden like oh i felt but i still felt like a freak to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you, because I couldn't play what other people were playing. Yeah, sure, I could uh, sit down and improvise a 30-minute piece like nothing, you know, and it would sound like someone had composed it. But that was nothing compared to what other people could do, which was normal. So, so I was still a freak. Well, this and, and I still have terrible pain from playing the piano. So this week, I am in an intensive. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep with this, but you'll see why this is really important. Well, you important. know, I think this is very relevant to everybody, including me, because we're all expected to be fitting into a certain cookie-cutter image of what, this is what's normal, you're supposed to do this. Exactly, exactly. And very few of us fit that. Nobody fits that. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. I mean, either, okay, <laughs> you're, you're in a family where half the children were, quote, 
illegitimate, meaning that the parents weren't married, and he, that was in a, in, a, in a social group that everybody else was married. So that makes you a freak. Or your parents are alcoholics. Or your parents aren't alcoholics. And everybody else is <laughs> are. Or you're poor. Or you have a funny looking nose. Or, you know, you bleed easily. Or you're a boy and you're a little effeminate. Or you're gay. Or you're whatever. I mean, there's a million and one reasons that people feel like freaks. Or you're a black girl in a white neighborhood or a white girl in a black neighborhood. Oh. oh, Todd, he says, this is fascinating and very relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So to, I've been doing this class, which is supposed to help you to avoid injuring yourself playing the piano and I always injure myself playing the piano <laughs> because I'm just always in pain and always messed up so and so I've been sitting through this class struggling through it they would say now just do this well the just little thing that I'm so I couldn't do the just do this and I couldn't do the just do that or it's a, now raise your arm with the other arm and it's like are you kidding that is so hard to raise my arm with the other arm and so I was feeling worse and worse about myself, even there. I'm in this place to help me to avoid injury, and I'm injuring myself just by trying <laughs> to do what the <laughs> tiny little things, you know, it was like going back to gym, you know, where I couldn't do anything. Well, this is the turning point. So the teacher came in and she took those of us who were online and there was only a few. Oh yeah, here we go. Amy says, I know I often think other people are freaks and I have lots of proof too, <laughs> not to mention feeling superior. Right, of course. It could be because you feel like a freak yourself. Oh no, no. They oh, are out of step. They are out of step. Not you. Totally <laughs> them. Oh yeah, or you're a Republican in a Democratic stronghold or vice versa, or you have mental illness, or you go on and on, or you're short, or you have. So anyway, today the teacher came in and instead of doing the big group, she just took the few of us who were online and she gave us attention. And I got personal attention from the big cheese who was running this program, who I respect tremendously. And I was supposed to go like this, right? I they can, to, oh yeah, from the side. Okay, I was gonna it. go, anyway, does that look like a big deal? Not to you, but to me, it was a big deal. Well, she said, Beth, instead of raising your hand off like that, why don't you just go slightly off and then relax? I, I don't wanna get into the details of it. I just want you to get the idea. She, so, and I thought, well, maybe I could do that. And I went like that, and I did. I didn't have to go up like that. That hurts. You know, going up like that hurts me. You fin finally had somebody who was adapting to your body. Exactly. What you could do. Exactly. She understood that I was having pain from doing the thing that she was asking me to do that I was trying to do but couldn't. And so she said, well, why don't we do it this way, right? And then I met another, uh, one of her assistants came on with me personally as they, they, everybody got personal attention then by one of the assistants. And she has hypermobility, which I also have, which is like, you know, your joints just don't stay where they're supposed to be. They collapse and all. And um, she told me what she was doing and they gave me all this reinforcement about how amazing I am that I play the piano at all. And it was it's like, oh, my God. So instead of feeling like a freak, I felt like a hero. And what James said is the critical thing. Everyone feels, I believe, everyone feels like there is something about them that stops them from fitting in. And maybe that you're too beautiful. Mm. You know, that's another thing. And so, just like James said, these people who couldn't do it before, because I was in the bigger classes, 
And there's another person. Oh, Elizabeth says, hi there. And she also sends a heart of love. Hi there, Elizabeth. So they're very good people, but they were trying to teach the whole group. And all of them were doing all of these things, like, oh, do this and do it. That and f I had this individual attention, and she was able to just switch the whole thing to fit my body. And suddenly I felt... <laughs> I can do this thing. And I, th I can do this because I could do that. Right. right. I could do that. I couldn't do this, but I could do that. Yeah, I'm exaggerating. Anyway, and that just like has been with me all day. And, um, and Todd says, what an important point. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for the support, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because we all have something. You know, even if you're a child who uh, has the kind of uh, body that only wakes up at night, like me, my body wakes up at night and falls asleep in the morning. And you're trying to go to school, and school starts at 8 in the morning, and you have to take the bus and the subway to get there, and so you're leaving at 7. That was me, and I couldn't do that. I couldn't. So even stuff like that, the way that everything is structured, the uh, social system, the schools, and so on. And Todd adds that we all feel like we don't fit in in some way. That was the important point. Yes, exactly. That is the important point. We all feel that way. So now, given that, and I felt the joy that somebody was going to help me because I don't need to be like everybody else. I just want to accomplish my goal, which is can I play the piano for a long time to come without getting all messed up? I mean, my doctor has to fix me every week. <laughs> I mean, and even then. So um, I, I want the goal. I, I don't have to fit in with the group. I just need to get that accomplished. So whether you're a freak because you're too bright to be sitting in that class and you're going to go out of your mind, you need something to do that will help you to fit in and feel good about yourself in that class. Or you're a little slower than some of the other kids and you need that special attention. Or you need to be emphasizing some other subject or whatever it is, or starting school at different times so different kids can go to school at at different times and so the teachers because there are some teachers who are probably dead on their feet by the time they get to school if it's eight o'clock in the morning so um we can figure this out you know we can figure this out what do people need but we need to give people the individual attention to even understand what they need but we are a mass-produced society i know there are people who are trying to change this and that is just wonderful but you know you, you go into work when I used to go to work in the old days when there were assembly lines and stuff like that you had to fit the machine That's I right. mean the, the thing came down the conveyor belt, and you had to be there at that moment and if you had to pee it was just too darn bad for you because you were not on break until somebody came and took you. So, <laughs> so you know, it was like everybody was treated that way, and it was very, very painful, and it still is when that happens. So think about if, as Todd says, and I absolutely agree, we all feel like we don't fit in in some way. And, by the way, uh, you know, I've been an intuitively guided counselor for what, over 40 years, I have seen inside the hearts of so many people, and they all feel this. Something was wrong with my parents. In fact, I have one couple that was a woman, her mother made all their clothes. So, I mean, you would say, oh my God, look at that. She made all their clothes. But, but, but then when she went to school, she didn't look like the other kids because her clothes look different from everybody else's clothes. Or if you're poor and you can't afford clothes, or I don't have to tell you. So now what happens to us on the inside? When we feel like we don't fit, 
and nobody is accommodating us. We feel like there is something wrong with us. Now, what can we do about that? Well, I'm just going to come up with two ideas. There may be a million others, but I'm just, these are the two I just want to f- mention now. <coughs> we can pretend we don't care, right? Like, that's not true. <laughs> we can feel really bad about ourselves. We can try to hide it. That is very common. We don't want anybody to know that our mother had two illegitimate children in the marriage while she was married to my father. Okay, I don't want anybody to know that. Again, I do not believe that there's such a thing as an illegitimate child. That's nonsensical view. A lot of people try to hide what's going on in their houses. I don't want anybody to know that my mother is an alcoholic. Right? I don't want anyone to know that because then I'm going to look bad. Or I don't want anybody to know that I don't understand a word that is being said. Or that I can't read. Somebody will hurt me or take advantage of me or something. I don't want anyone to know. Or another option, and that's what I was referring to before. We're going to band together with other people who have the same thing. And we're going to get support from one another. Well, that sounds divine, doesn't it? Maybe. Maybe not. It is always wonderful for people like, okay, I was raped a couple of times at knife point. That's true, I was. And um, it's not my fault, and it's good to discuss that with other people who have been raped, male or female, right? So banding together is good, or getting help like I got today. But a lot of people, when they're banding together, they do it in a way is like, we're better because we are the whatevers. The skinheads, the freaks, the, you know, whatever. Like, we are some, we, they make that the badge of something. Rather than saying, everybody feels like a freak. Nobody feels like they fit. fit. Everyone needs to be welcome. We need to be more inclusive. It becomes more them <laughs> and us. <laughs> right? Them <laughs> and us. And you see that (laughs) more and more and more in our society today. Now, I am not trying to blame everything on that, but I think this, and I have no statistics, and I'm not a sociologist. I'm just an old lady with eyes. And I would tell you that I believe that a lot of what we're seeing in the political mayhem has to do with people growing up feeling like they don't belong, and that that we all feel like, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, we've been covered that. People feel like they don't belong, they don't count, that nobody cares about them, and you're going to see it. You are going to see it. And you're going to see anger, and you're going to see resentment, and you're going to see guns, and you're going to see violence. So either you're hiding it, because I don't want anyone to know, or it's going to make you mad, and you're going to go out and get revenge. And in that, there is no attempt to understand one another. There is no what I call, I am that. I am that means we are all one. We can understand one another if we make some kind of an effort, right? And nobody is any more different than anybody else because we're all different and we're all the same. It's just the irony of the way people are. We are different and the same. There's something so the same about us. And why am I bringing this up in this context and I, instead of just telling you this happy story about how I didn't feel like a freak today and uh, this is a great thing for me. I actually have a body that can do something. But it's because I am terrified. And you should be too. 
of the deep alienation that is leading to the meanness, to the violence, to the self-centeredness, you know. If you live in a country where people have liberal values, for example, but those people have enough to eat, they have enough to pay their rent, they're okay, and you don't happen to have any of those things, or you don't have a sense of belonging for whatever reason, different belief system. Different life experience, different something. We don't try to sit down with one another and understand one another. We just start to put up these barriers. We start to fight. If you're in this liberal collective and you don't have what they have, you're going to be angry. So I'm going to tell you a story of something that happened to me decades ago when I was in the political movement and in this organization which had progressive values, the black people there wanted more than 50 percent, more than their vote, 50 percent because they felt like they had been excluded and downtrodden and all of that. And I totally understood how they felt. They're right. Black people in this country have been treated really badly. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you deny it. It's the truth. However, when the people stood up and said, well, I support that idea, I thought, this is stupid. I know from being white and being working class myself, you know, working class, poor, you know, that the people who were white in the working class, and I mean, I'm talking about 1967, right? They don't feel like they have any power. We don't have any power. And so if you say, well, okay, now we're going to give the blacks more votes than th these white people, then how are these white people supposed to or, feel? Or special treatment, like affirmative action. Exactly. Or, so mm -hmm. my position was, why don't we give more to everybody? Why don't we let everybody into college? You know, why does, why does it have to be that way? So you may disagree with me. That's fine. You can think anything you want. But that was what I felt, because I told them that, that the white working class was going to feel disenfranchised, is going to feel powerless. And while I totally understood the pain of the people who were asking for this, and what was motivating them was their own pain, but I also understood the pain on the other side. And so I said, this is not good. And well, do I have to tell you <laughs> that I was voted down? <laughs> Big time. Big time. Nobody wanted to hear it. And now we see it. So I'm not telling you this to tell you that I was a genius. I'm telling you this because it's obvious. And when the, and when the liberals in this organization voted in the higher degree of power for the blacks, they left the organization after they did. So they gave the blacks power and they walked away. They, they took away their money. They took away <laughs> all their support. It's pretty funny. So what's wrong with us? You know, why can't we at least sit down and think about what could be going on in someone else's life? And so you see what I'm saying? That was uh, someone being in a culture that did not take into consideration their own <laughs> feelings. So they may see in Hollywood all these rich people with certain uh, progressive beliefs, but that's not their lives. And so they are going to have different kinds of beliefs. And we are living through tragic times because people are out of their minds, angry, and trying to go for power against one another. without realizing that everybody feels the same way because those people who are 
fighting violently for their own power against the, quote, liberals, are not recognizing that gays and women and black people and trans people and all the people who don't fit also feel disenfranchised, feel like they have, and with very good reason, by the way, <laughs> feeling like, uh, you know, they don't have any power. So let's start to wake up. Wake up, America. It isn't going to help to keep going tisk, tisk, tisk. It isn't just America, it's all over the world. All over the world. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Oh, these people are so terrible, and those people are so terrible. Until we start to say, I have the same feelings. I understand. I know how they feel. I want to understand and start to structure the society to actually fit people. Oh my God. To fit people like clothing for women doesn't all have to be skimpy, right? It should fit women's bodies no matter what size or shape you are. And the expectations of women, of men, of children, of people, of, of them, of, you know, people, non-binary, whatever. We all need a society that is paying attention to us making us feel included, making us feel loved, making us feel like we're not freaks and we don't have to defend ourselves from anything. Well, you know, we've talked about the potluck society where each can bring to the table whatever they can, and then also each can receive whatever they need. That's right. That's right. So if you want to wear... A scarf over your head, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever, right? Let's do it. Let's wake up. Let's start to stop judging one another. Let's start to understand the collective pain that everybody has, not just because of their race or social standing, but also because of their own personal differences. create a more loving world. So that's all I can say for now. Uh, don't forget to come tomorrow when we do Beth Green's Magical Piano Improvisation. And I will be playing the piano, but not in the new way yet, because I, I haven't learned yet how to play in the new way. But I'll so you'll play in your usual I'll way. I'll be playing, but I'll somehow be playing. And uh, <laughs> I hope you think about this. I hope that you love this show, that you share this show with everybody, whether they agree with you or they don't agree with you, because we all need to change this thinking. And Blanquita says hello. Hello, Beth and James. And hello. hola, Blanquita. Yes. So, hasta mañana, uh -huh. until tomorrow for some of you who will hear us play, and until next week when we come back, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time Live is Granny Rocks, and Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Time Live for Beth Green's Magical Piano Improvisations. Spread the word. Share the program. Thanks for coming. Thank bye you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.